Hello champions and future champions, hello chessmod family, Jim Gabudin is here with you and we are beginning our daily lesson. Today we have a very exciting tactical topic. Before going deeper in the details, I will offer you to pause the video and try to find best continuation here for white. We can spot the weakness of f7 pawn. In this moment, if white goes knight to g5 move, Black can protect it going rook f8. As you know, if we play now knight f7, rook f7 and take, and give two pieces for the rook and the pawn, with so many pieces on the board, it favors to black. That's the reason at the beginning we need to play differently. Topic of this video is typical bishop f7 sacrifices. Let me mention that in previous daily lessons, we had the same topic with the sacrifice of the knight as well. Now back to this position. We take a pawn and as well black cannot ignore this because rook on e8 is hanging. Black has to take. After queen b3 check, black has two moves available. It's king g6, which has happened in the game, and king f8. After knight g5 now, we are threatening queen f7 checkmate, which is unstoppable on top of that knight e6 and the queen is hanging. That's why. After check, black has to play king g6. Now, we sacrificed a piece and we need to play very active. If white slows down here, black goes h6 and running bet with king h7. That's the reason we need to keep this king in the center as much as possible. Here white plays knight h4 check. And after king h5, I will offer you to pause the video and decide how are we going to continue this attack. Here white plays queen f7 check. And we are fine if black captures on h4, because with queen g7 we are creating several mating threats. Bishop g5 and queen g5 are mating. And if black is moving the knight in order to protect this g5 square, queen g4 now is mating. For this reason, after the check, black has to play g6. If we try to play now g4, already black can capture our knight and this will be very messy. For this reason after g6, we are using the fact that this pawn is under a pin and going knight f5, black cannot take it. Already we have a threat of g4 check. Because black king is not having only moves, they are forced to take and now queen h7 check is mating after knight h6 and queen takes h6. For this reason, after knight f5, Black here goes rook h8 and is protecting pawn on h7. I offer you to pause the video here and try to figure out the last and very beautiful move for white. Here white, instead of creating a threat with the queen, is destroying the knight, queen f6. Idea is that after bishop f6, g4 is a very beautiful checkmate. Otherwise after takes if black is ignoring it and capturing the knight, we are mating with queen h6 move in this position. Bishop f7 is a very dangerous tactical option, happening very often in chess game. I offer you to go and see the next example. Let me tell you that this one is a super exciting example and my favorite one with bishop f7 tactical ideas. Now you know what we are looking for and I offer you to pause the video trying to calculate bishop f7 move in this position. Let's go on. We take, as we know black cannot ignore this because the rook is hanging, black has to take and queen b3 check. The main move which we are going to see is king e7, but king g6 is also an option and we need to know how to play here. If you haven't seen it previously, once again you can pause the video and try to calculate. It's leading to an unavoidable checkmate after knight h4 check. King h5 at queen d1 check. Black king has no options but capturing our knight. And now the most aggressive piece is joining the game. King h2. Creating g3 mating threat. Funny thing is black cannot prevent it. As you know it's a checkmate threat, bishop and queen are controlling the other squares. If black goes knight h5, we are mating with our queen. For this reason after the check, king g6 is not an option. 
Black has to play king e7. You can pause the video now and think. But let me tell you, there is a great continuation and absolutely exciting one. Try to find the best. If you see here, knight g5 with the threat of queen e6 and queen f7, that's very much winning and black here tries to give away the knight and escape with the king. This position is winning since on the way to the queen side, black is losing a lot of material. But instead of knight g5, it's super amazing if you found queen e6 check. What's going on? White is giving away the queen only to bring opponent's king to e6 square and make knight g5 check at tempo. The reason we are doing this is that after king e7, we play knight d5 check. Now it would be a beautiful checkmate with the knights if there is no knight on f6. Black has to take and now rook f7 is absolutely fascinating checkmate. In this cool way white's winning the game. I hope you like this example as much as I did. Now let's go ahead and you will get your homework position. Here is black to move and let me tell you in advance, you are not expected to find only the first few moves. There is a long variation which is very much forced and if concentrated you can calculate it very well. I offer you to share your thoughts and ideas in the comment section below. Jim Gabuzian was here with you. Thank you for your subscriptions, likes and sharing this video with your friends. We appreciate it a lot. See you next time during our next daily lessons.